described right there are enemies of the Most High. You staying or you leaving? You staying? Can you video tape on my phone? And I don't believe here the Most High is 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 loving these enemies. If they're yeah, enemies, yeah. Video right? Tape there's, I'm gonna give you this. He's not loving. Charger too. Con, he said that uh, when we just read in Malachi chapter one. He said that he hated Esau, all right, but he loved Jacob. And this goes, this is a, a, a good prelude to go into uh, what we're going to talk about okay, today is Esau the Arabs. We're going to show you how Esau made this covenant with these other nations, and he mixed his seat with these other nations to help him become to help them become enemies solely of the children of Israel. So these are our enemies that the Most High was talking about right here in Psalms 83. Cut. All right, so we're going to get into it. All right, man, I wish we could uh, be on the same side. So I got to keep spinning this thing around. Okay, so yeah, go, go over there so we can. All right, so. We're going we gonna to get into this doctrine, is Esau the Arabs and all this kind of stuff. Um, you know, like certain doctrines, Malak don't like to get involved in if it's not talking about our salvation. So really, if, if you believe one way or the other, you know what I'm saying? This isn't something that I believe that the Most High would, you know, put you in hell for. But at the same time, you want to know who your enemies are. You know what I'm saying? You want to know what's going on. You want to be scripturally sound on where you need to be and who, who this person is and who that person is to the best of your ability, right? So we're, gonna, we're about to go and we're about to find out it's Esau the heirs, right? And it's going to be deep too, so y'all get ready. There you go. Okay, so now let's start off at Genesis 25-23. We're going to start here first because this, this is the whole foundation of when Esau and Jacob was actually created, right? So that, let's get a reader on that. I got it. I'm in the book of Genesis chapter 25, starting at verse 23. And the Most High spake unto her, Two nations are in thy womb. Excuse me, select. And two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. And the one people shall be stronger than the other. And the elder shall serve the younger. Okay, so this says two manner of people, right? Meaning these are two different nations of people. You can't just say, well, look, man, when he came out, he was still an Israelite. You know what I'm saying? He still looked like everybody else. The Most High is showing you that there was a difference within this womb, right? Come on. Okay, keep going. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. Uh -huh. And the first came out red all over, like a hairy garment. And they called his name Esau. Okay, so now the word red. Now this is where we get the uh, get real confused, right? Because when we go into the definition of the word red, right, we go to uh, Adami, right, which is red or ruddy, right? Okay, so now mm -hmm. a lot of people don't know what ruddy means, right? Now ruddy, that let's get let's get a definition on ruddy. I'm going to give you all an example. David was called ruddy, right? So a lot of people think that David was, was uh, he was, uh, he was, uh, a white yeah, a white guy with, with, with blonde hair like an albino, right? But we're going to break that down. Matter of fact, let me give you the other definition that's in here, too. Let's go to, um, let's go to H19, H119. What did that one say? That one says Adam, right? And the definition, you ain't gotta be on my nose, bro. <laughs> 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 this vital stuff right here. No, 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 no. 
I would say it's like, um, Adam is to show blood in the face, right? It means flushy or turn rosy red, right? So what people do we know that you can see the blood in their face, right? Like, seriously, right? Now, now look, now this, this is the two definitions that's there, right? So a lot of people try to throw the ruddy in, right? Right? But we got to understand what ruddy means, right? So, that, so David was called ruddy. Let's go to 1 Samuel 17 and 42. And uh, that's how I can knock y'all read that. Okay. Or, or evil. Because I want to Yeah. So 1 Samuel 17, 42. 17, 42. Samuel 17, verse 42. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth and ruddy and of a fair countenance. Okay. Now look, now the word ruddy, right? Now this is what we're about to understand. Now let's go to Lamentations 4 and 7. is white, whiter than milk, and they're ruddy in the body like rubies, right? Okay, so now let's go to the next verse. Verse 8, their visage is blacker than a coal. Uh-oh, their visage is what? Blacker than coal. Blacker than a coal. Okay, so their visage means their face, right? right? Their right. face is what? Black. Black. Blacker than a Okay, so we know that they're not talking about the physical appearance of these people. Mm -mm. They're talking about the inward part of these people, God. right? They're saying that these people, these Nazarites, their spirit and their garment is so white, these people are so good that they ruddy like rubies, right? God. Okay, so now ruddy is a good thing, right? If you ruddy, you good. You, you like a ruby, right? But their faces was blacker than coal, right? So now we go back to Esau. Now you think the Most High said he hated Esau before he was even born, right? So the word ruddy, if we was to use the word ruddy and it's something good when he came out, how can we use that, that particular scripture when he said that he was ruddy means like you're a garment, you're beautiful, you're, you're shining, because we're not talking about the a physical appearance. So if we was going into the scriptures to get a definition of the physical appearance, we would have to use 119 because 119 is saying that their faces were uh, red. You can see the blood through their face, right? Okay, so that's one point that I bring out. Now, we about to keep going, though. It's about to get deep. Okay, so now, a lot of people, when they're talking about Esau, they try to use uh, science, within the 12 tribes of Israel or with Esau or uh, by, uh, they, they use it how we see it today without using a miracle base to it. Okay, Esau went in and he started having sex with the Canaanites, right? And so the Canaanites are supposed to be Africans. And so since he had an African wife or whatever, they thinking that the baby gonna come out looking like the mother, right? But remember, Esau was supposed to create his own nations. Right. right. So now to give you an example of what I mean by this, okay, we got Ham, Shem, and Japheth, right? They created all the nations upon the face of the earth. This was a miracle before the Most High, right? Every person that Esau had sex with was becoming Esau. Right. That woman, 
That woman had no power. She didn't have the power to create the nation. Esau had the power to create the nation. Come. Just like Ham, Shem, and Japheth had the power to create the nation. And this was this was by the power of the Most High. This wasn't this wasn't you can't use biology and science and and how we see if I go have sex with a white girl and how the baby going to come out. You can't use none of that when you're dealing with the power of the Most High. Because these people, every time he had sex with somebody, Esau was creating a nation. Right? Right. So you win. Okay, so now, uh, there's, now I'm, we're going we gonna to do this. That Before, take you back to Numbers 18. Numbers okay. 1 and 18, right there. He created his own nation. Okay, so watch this, though. We about to get, we, let's get deep. Okay, where's my notes at? Okay, so they're saying that Esau, you know, was the Arabs, right? So we're going we gonna to break that down right now. Is this it? Yeah, okay. All right, so let's go to Genesis 25 and 13. Up here? Yeah. Genesis chapter 25. In verse 18, 13. 13. And these are the names of the sons of Ishmael by their name, according to the generations, according to uh, the firstborn of Ishmael, Nebojah, and Kedar, and, Ab, and Abiel, and Mibsam, Mibsam, and Mishma, and Duma, and Masa. All right, let's start right there. Now, when we get to the word Duma, right? Somebody look that up for me real quick. Go on the east word, look up the word Duma. Oh, yeah. Duma. D-U-M-A-H. A tribe and region of Arabia. A tribe, a region, and where? Arabia. Okay, a tribe, region in Arabia. Who was the father of Duma? Duma. Ishmael. Ishmael was the father of the Arabia, of, of this tribe in Arabia. Y'all hear me? Right. right? Yeah, so right. it's showing that Ishmael was the father of Duma. Duma was a tribe of the Arabians. Right? Let's, let's go to um, Joshua. 15 and 52. Joshua 15 and 52? Yeah, we'll get that real quick, then I gotta explain something real quick. Go ahead. Joshua 15 and 52. Arab and Dumont and the Shean. Okay, so we see Arab and Duma together, right? Okay, so can, can just, I can I can I bring out the definition in the Zondervans of, yeah, go of ahead. Duma? Go ahead. All right, it says uh, Duma, one of the twelve sons of Ishmael, as recorded in Genesis twenty-five fourteen through sixteen, and apparently the head of one of the twelve tribes of Ish of the Ishmaelites in Arabia, a place uh, unknown but connected with Sair. Or Edom. Mm -hmm. and, and I was just about to bring that out. Good. He said, because they connected with Esau and Edom. Uh -huh. And so now, uh, man, man, that's that's the spirit moving right there because me and him was on the same, uh, <laughs> we was on the same wavelength. Uh -huh. So now when we talking about who Esau is, right? But we got to understand that all white people are not Esau. Huh. Right. There you go. They have uh, Esau. It, it's, it's many different white people. Uh, the Romans and the Greeks was white people, but they was not Esau, right? But then we have. Um, I mean, it's it's uh, it's so many, man. But what I'm trying to say is that you might be seeing somebody a, a Japhonite would be white, but he is not Esau, right? So right. it's many different white, it's like, I'm going to give you an example. Okay, American white person and a Russian white person automatically knows that they different from one another. 
You know what I'm saying? Even though they look just alike, they know that they are different tribes. And they know the tribes that they come from, but they never tell us. And this was the biggest deception that we have right now is that we're bundling them all together all and saying together. that they all one nation. And they're right. not. And they know they're not. And, That's and, why and, they fight against and, each and other. And think about this too, right? Think about how, right, Esau was a cursed seed. And also he said Cain, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And Cain mixed himself. Mm -hmm. Right amongst the multitudes of people. Yeah. Right to to kind of conceal their identity. Exactly. So, but it's a spirit that's in them that we got to recognize. Right. Exactly. So that's how we're gonna recognize them. We're gonna recognize them by their spirit. Man, it, it's it's it, it's even deeper than it's it's deep like that. Yeah. But it it gets a little bit more deeper because remember, Esau, it, he been going around doing some work. Putting, putting in that, work. Putting that work. He been putting in work, right? So now we just showing right here that the father of the Arabs came from Ishmael, right? Come from Duma, right? That's scripture. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how we're gonna get out of that one. But it's gonna even get deeper than that. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna show right here. Let's see, uh let's go to uh Genesis 49 and 10. In the book of Genesis, chapter 49, in verse 10, the scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver between his feet, until Shiloh come, mm -hmm. and until him. Yeah, I said, Gen I, I said Genesis, I'm sorry. Yeah. Shalak, y'all. <laughs> uh, Jeremiah 49 and 10. Gotcha. Mm. Okay. All right. I'm in the book of Jeremiah. Chapter 49 and verse 10. But I have made Esau bare, and I have uncovered his secret places, and he shall not be able to hide himself. His seed is spoiled, and his brother and his neighbors, and he is not. Okay, so Esau, right, he mixed his seed amongst the nations. Do y'all see this? He said his seed is spoiled, right? Because Esau been bouncing. This is what me and you was talking about, right? right? They bouncing. He bouncing all over the place, getting all these nations, and he have nations within nations right. coming against us. They all and and, then, and they, they are tribes within a tribe. That's Esau. This is how deep this is. And the Most High said that he's going to uncover his hidden places. And this is what he's doing because Esau been hidden for so long, but Esau hitting you from every angle. Every angle. Right? Okay, so now let's go to Jeremiah 25 and 15. I'm in the book of Jeremiah. Chapter 25. Verse 15. For thus saith the most high power of Israel unto me, take the wine cup of this fury at my hand and cause all the nations to whom I send thee to drink it. And they shall drink and be moved and be mad because of the, because of the sword that I will send among them. Then I took the cup at the, at the most high's hand and made all the nations drink unto whom the most high had sent me. Mm -hmm. To wit, Jerusalem, and the cities of Judah, and the kings thereof, and the princes thereof, to make them desolation, and an astonishment, and a hissing, and a curse, mm -hmm. as it is to this day. And the Pharaoh king of Egypt, and his servants, and his princes, and all his people, and all the mingled people, and all the kings of the land of Uz, and the kings of the land of the Philistines, and Ashkelon and Azza, and Ekron, and the remnant of Ashdod. Okay, so we know that all of those nations right there come out of Esau, right? Now remember, when he said the land of, these are all the nations that's of the land of Oz. Now let's keep going, watch how deep it gets. Edom, and, and Moab, and the children of Ammon. Okay, so man, they was deep over there. 
Esau Man. went over there and started getting all of these other nations, bringing them all in one place, and he was bringing his seed in with their seed. Right. Watch this. And all the kings of Tyrus, and all the kings of Zidon, and the kings of the isles in which are beyond the sea, Dedan, and Tema, and, and Buzz, and all that, that are in the utmost corners, and all the kings of Arabia, and all the kings of the mingled people he that said, dwelled. He said all the kings of who? The mingled people that dwelled in the desert. He said all the kings of Arabia. And then he said, and all the kings, all the people that was mingled amongst them. Mingled being mixed. mixed. Right? So look, let's keep going. And all the kings of Zimri, and all the kings of Elam, and all the kings of the Medes, and all the kings of the north, far and near one with another and all the kingdoms of the world which are upon the face of the earth and the kings of uh, Shishet shall drink after them. Therefore thou shalt say unto them, thus saith the most high of hosts, the power of Israel, drink ye and be drunken and spew all the fall and fall and rise no more because the sword which I shall send among you. Mm -hmm. And if it shall be if they refuse to take the cup at thine hand to drink, then shalt thy say unto them, Thus saith the Most High of hosts, Ye shall certainly drink. For lo, I begin to bring evil upon the city which is called by my name. Mm -hmm. And should ye be, and you should be utterly punished, ye shall not be unpunished. For I will call for a sword upon all the inhabitants of the earth, saith the Most High of hosts. Therefore prophesy against them all these words and say unto them, The Most High shall roar on the high and utter his voice from the holy habitation. He shall mightily roar upon his habitation and he shall give a shout as they tread upon tread the grapes against all the inhabitants of the earth. A noise shall come even to the ends of the earth for the Most High has a controversy with the nations. And he will plead with all flesh, and he will give them that that are wicked to the sword, saith the Most High. Okay, so we can start right there. So as we can see, all these nations, remember Esau mixed his seed. They was all in one place. You don't think Esau was over there tearing these people up? Esau then went into a lot. So now to answer the question, is Esau the Arabs, right? Yes. To a certain extent, there is a remnant of Esau in the Arab nation. Right. There is a remnant of Esau in the uh, in the Moab. In Moab is a remnant of Esau in many different nations. Right. So now, do we want to now remember all white people? Now let's let's go to the Romans and the Greeks real quick. All right, let's do that real quick. They are called, uh, can I get what I tell you the people called again? I do mean? Uh, Kittim. Oh, Kittim. Yeah, shit. Yeah. Yeah. Right, let's get yeah. that real quick. Yeah. Had a brain freeze for a minute. Okay, so now, let's go, first let's go to Numbers 24, 24. No, let's just go to Genesis uh, chapter 10 real quick so we can find out where Chittim come from. All right, so uh, Genesis 10, and we're going to start at verse 2. Somebody read that. Genesis 10 and 2. Mm -hmm. Genesis chapter 10 and verse 2. The sons of Japheth, Goma, Magog, and Medai, and Javan, and Tubal, and Meshach, and Tyrus. And the sons of Goma, Ashkenaz, Ripah, and Togamah. And, and the sons of Javan, Elisha, and Tarshish, and Kittim. And who? Kittim. And who? And Kittim. All right, let's look up the word Kittim. And so nobody don't think Malak lying. 
I want you to read the definition right here. Okay, you see it? It's right here. Oh, yeah, right here. <laughs> All right, it says partial and unused name denoting cyphers, only in plural, kitty or crypto. Hence, an islander in general you got that, book. that is the Greeks or Romans on the shores Jackson. opposite of Palestine. Mm -hmm. Chittim or Kittim. Okay. So they are the Greeks and Romans. Okay, Greeks and Romans is considered Chittim or Kittim, right? Okay, so let's go to a little history in the book of Jasher, chapter 90. We're going to read this real quick. They're all over this book. Josh. That's uh, Josh chapter what? No. Uh, dude, I forgot. Dude. Hold it on was nine. I think it was 90. Yeah. Yeah, it is 90. Read that, Monty, chapter 90, verse 1. The Edomites are smitten by Chittim. Okay, so the Edomites are smitten by who? Chittim. That's the, that's the whole topic of this, right? Mm -hmm. So this is the Romans and the Greeks going against Esau, right? So we can't say Esau is them right now. Right. We got to keep reading, read. The land is divided. And the people have rest. Joshua being advanced in years, exhort the people to observe all the laws of Moses. And then he died. Mm -hmm. Continue? Yeah, continue. At the time of the fifth year, after the children of Israel had passed over the Jordan, after the children of Israel had rested from their war with the Canaanites, at the time, great and severe battle arose between Edom and the children of Chittim. And the children of Chittim fought against Edom. And, the, and Abanius, the king of Chittim, went forth in that year. That is the 21st year of his reign. And great force with him of, the, of mighty men of the children of Chittim. And he went to Seir to fight against the children of Esau. And Hadad, the king of Edom, heard, heard his report. And he went forth to meet him. With a, with, with a heavy people and strong force and to engage in battle with him in the field of Edom. And the hand of Chittim prevailed over the children of Esau and the children of Chittim, Chittim slew the children of Esau and 20,000 men and all the children of Esau fled from before him. And the children of Chittim, Chittim pursued and they reached Hadad, the king of Edom, who was running before them they caught him alive and brought him to Abanius, the king of Chittim. And Abanius ordered him to be slain. And Hadad, the king of Edom, died in the 48th year of his reign. Mm -hmm. And the children of Chittim continued their pursuit of Edom. And they smote them with great slaughter. And Edom became subject to the children of Chittim. Mm -hmm. And the children of Chittim ruled over Edom. And Edom became under the hands of the children of Chittim and became one kingdom from that day. They became what? One kingdom from that day. They became what? One kingdom from that day. Okay, so from that day, Esau and Chittim became one kingdom Come. until that day. That's very powerful. It's you know what I'm saying? You, you got to understand that Esau been around, so he went into to the Moabs, he went into the Arabs because he married a, 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 one of the wives from Ishmael. Then he went and he got, then he came back and he came with the Romans and the Greeks. So he got a piece of Esau in so many different places, right? So now the main question is this, okay? Who are these people that's, that brought us here on slave ships? Are they Esau? 
That's the question we want to know, right? Okay, so now, let's, let's do some precepts. So we're going to start in Deuteronomy chapter 28, and we're going to start at 49. And we're going to do precept upon precept until we get the answer. Okay, Deuteronomy 28 and 49. All right. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 49. And the Most High shall bring a nation against thee from afar, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flying, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. So he gonna bring a nation against you swift as the eagle flying, right? Whose nation you shall not understand, right? So now that's, we gonna do precepts, right? So let's go to Jeremiah 5 and 15. Let's get a little bit more information. In the book of Yermiyahu, chapter 5, in verse 15. Lo, I will bring a nation upon you from afar, O house of Israel, saith the Most High. It is a mighty nation, and it is an ancient nation, a nation whose language thou knowest not, neither understandest what they say. Okay, so it's going to be an ancient and a mighty nation. They're not going to understand what they say, right? Huh. Okay, so now I'm going to Obadiah 1 and 9. In the book of Obadiah, chapter 1, in verse 9. And thy mighty men, O Timon, shall be dismayed to the ends that every one of the Mount of Esau may be cut off by slaughter. Okay, so now remember, we was in Jeremiah 5 and 15, right? We heard the name mighty men, right? So now I'm showing that Esau was called mighty men. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now jump down to verse 4. I mean, uh, Obadiah 1 and 4. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though thou set thy nest amongst the stars, thence will I bring thee down. Okay, so now we have high. mighty men, and we have the eagle, right? In the same exact verse, showing that it's pointing towards Esau. We ain't done. Let's, let's keep going. We got to get more information. So let's go back to Deuteronomy 28. And 33. Deuteronomy 28, verse 33. The fruit of thy land and all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up, and thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed away. Okay, so we're going to be oppressed and crushed always. Now, I want to bring this out. In Deuteronomy 28, we found out who we were because we read the scriptures and it, and it, it linked into us. We like, man, this couldn't be nobody but us. Right. This is exactly how you how you find out who these people is that brought us over here. Right. That's what we're doing. Let's go to Jeremiah five and seventeen. So now remember, they have uh, it said a nation which thou knowest not shall eat up everything that you have. Right. And then they're going to oppress you and crush you at all times. Right. So now we're going to Jeremiah five and seventeen. Jeremiah chapter 5 and verse 17. And they shall eat up thine harvest and thy bread, which thy sons and thy daughters should eat. They shall eat up thy flock and thine herds. They shall eat up thine vines and thy fig trees. They shall impoverish thy fit cities, wherein thou trusted with the soul. Okay, so now these same people that... Uh, Jeremiah, how much time do we have though? <laughs> I don't know what time is. We, we have a little they... interruption, people, and it's getting good. Right. So, uh, I think they closed. Astro, can we get 10 minutes? 5.41. Astro, can we get 10 minutes? Oh, 15. <laughs> That's all I need. Let me keep going. Okay, so we have, uh, 
5 and 17, and he said, And they shall eat up the harvest and the bread, which the sons and daughters shall eat. And they shall eat up the flocks and the herds, and, shall, and they shall eat up the, the vines and the fig trees, and they shall impart thy fence cities with thou trusses with the sword. Right? So now we go to Obadiah 1 and 5. If there be thieves to thee, if there be robbers by not, how art thou cut off? Would thou have not stolen till thou have stolen enough? If thou had grape gatherers came to thee, would they have not to the, uh, leave some grapes? So basically what's happening is we're seeing that Esau fits the description of people that's eating up everything that you have, right? Okay, so now I'm going to try to hurry this up. Uh, let's go to Lament we're going to Lamentations 4 and 21. This is very important. Okay, Lamentations 4 and 21. He said, Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom, that dwellest in the land of Oz. The cup also shall pass from thee, that thou shalt be drunken, and thou shalt make thyself naked. Right? So this is the most high talking about Esau that he about to expose them and make them drink the cup. And that cup is, is a whole other lesson of what this cup is. And he says, the, pun the punishment of thy iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion. He shall no more carry thee away in captivity. Come on now. Right? So it said that Esau carried the daughters of Zion into captivity. Right? Mm -hmm. We was doing precepts the whole entire time, pointing straight at Esau. Now the Most High said that there is going to come a time where they will not be able to carry us away in captivity. He said, O daughter of Edom, he shall discover thy sins. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now. Uh, we're all, I, we rushing, man. It's like I'm right. trying to find out the, the important parts that we got to bring out. But, um, shoot, man. We basically, I'm just going to wrap it up because how much time we got? Yeah, we got to go. Okay, all right. So basically, it's like this, family. As you can see, what we brought out, that Esau had mixed his seed amongst a whole bunch of nations. And so to pinpoint Esau as just this particular one, and he's nowhere else, that's where you go wrong at. Because you're saying he's the Arabs and nobody else. So that's what's making right. the doctrine messed up because yeah there's a remnant of Esau in the Arab community Arabia. and then it's talking about Chittim yeah then it's talking about Chittim so now we got the Romans and the Greeks have a, a portion of Esau within their nation Right. then we got the people that's over here fitting all of the prophecies to show us that they are Esau but not all of them so it, like, it goes back to what Mariahu says that you're going to know him by his spirit you're going to know him by his actions Right. What, he, what he is doing if he is the bloodline of Esau. So that's the Esau and a, the Arab doctrine that Malak brings out. I don't just say it's them and nobody else. That don't even make sense because the Most High said that Esau had mixed his seed amongst a whole bunch of nations. Mm -hmm. So, I mean. This that, was a fast version, right? Yeah, this is a fast, fast version. <laughs> hey, and I, 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 I approve this message. <laughs> All right, now. Shalom. Uh, we, we, go, we, we gotta go, so we go, we go, we about to cap out and you know wrap it up. Wrap it up. Mm -hmm. We hate to do it to y'all, but we had to. <laughs> that might be Esau kicking us out. <laughs> <laughs> I done heard my name too many times. <laughs> Being called too many times. <laughs> oh, that's gonna be really good. <laughs> 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 We're about to get us kicked out right now. It's time to go. Hmm. All right, y'all. On the conference call, we got to roll. So y'all have a blessed one. I love y'all. See y'all in a minute, all right? Yep. Hebrews on uh, Facebook. Love y'all. Y'all yep. go Is ahead and make sure y'all watch part, two, part one. You know what I'm saying? This part two had... Uh, Shalom, everybody. It's Esau the Arab mixed in with it. So, all praise to the most. You ended it? I know how to cut it off. I'll oh, okay. And, uh, shalom, shalom, everybody. This is Brother Malak. Yeah, shalom, shalom. Y'all go ahead. And... Shalom, shalom. My head, my head piece going all up. Got to push it down a little bit. All right, so that's, that's our breakdown on it. All praise to the most high.
hopefully everybody gets some information off of this. But like I said, you know, to have it all in one place, that ain't cool. You know, we, we what we try to do is we try to, you know, stick by the scriptures because he could be many different places. All praise to the Most High. We out. Shalom, everybody.